Oh, I brought you guys a fun fact. I brought you guys a fun fact earlier in the week, which was there was five world champions at 135 pounds. From the sitting champion in Aljo to five past champions that are all in the division, and that's more than any other division has. As a matter of fact, that's more than any division has ever had. I brought, I brought you that. I then had to come back and amend that statement because it turned out there was six. I got corrected by the kids on the underground forum to remind me of Frankie Edgar, who happens to be my favorite fighter, being number seven. I always think of Frankie as a 145-pounder, but he's not. He's at 35. He's number seven. I then had another kid correct that kid, again on the underground forum, to tell us that there's actually eight if you insert Cody Garbrandt. I don't. Cody Garbrandt's last fight was at 125. I put him down there, but I see the point. Eight world champions in one division still active. Not to, I mean, you guys want to get, I don't know that Uriah Faber has ever announced his retirement. Uriah Faber was in a wrestling tournament last night. I don't know that he's announced his retirement. We could be talking about nine world champions, but here's a bigger question. Not only is that a really cool thing that somebody should be using, somebody within that division should be using it. And it's a very hard time to ever disrespect a world champion, but sometimes we find ways to do it. And I really feel that Sterling is the guy that the community has chosen right now, for whatever reason, to try to take away from what he's achieved. I feel that, but prior to Sterling, you only had to go back five months and there was Charlie Olives. People were actually calling Charles Oliveira, Charlie Olives. I was one of those people. I did not accept what I was seeing. I did not accept his path there. I don't remember why. It was five short months ago. I don't remember why. But then you start looking at a little more realistic. And I was the first to admit 155 pounds is the hardest division in the sport. So if you are the king of the hardest division in the sport, come hook or crook. If a guy slipped on a banana peel, does it make a bit of difference? You're pretty damn good, right? Charles Oliveira then has his match with Dustin Poirier. I've never heard the term Charlie Olives again. All of a sudden, it's, it's Sir Charles. So it changes very quickly. But if we do look at that, and we want to apply that to Aldo, Aljo, and we want to try to take away from Sterling, how do we do it when we're confronted with the fact that there's seven and possibly eight world champions in the division, which is an all-time record, and he sits at top of it? Like, how do we do that with a straight face? It makes us look a little bit silly. I also think there's a major marketing opportunity there. Those guys in that day, like everything is a competition and only some guys look at it like that. But your division and how many your division gets headlines, how many of your division gets main events, gets pay-per-views is very relevant. And even if those guys, you want to go do damage to them and you're going to compete with them and you're going to put your life on hold to increase your skills so that you can't compete and beat them, they're still your partners. Whether you like it or not, that's the way this works. There's an opportunity for them to rise up. I don't have... I don't have the full marketing gimmick laid out. I'm just sharing for you. That is remarkable. Possibly eight, for sure, with Frank Yeager. For sure, seven sitting active in the same bracket right now, world champions. That is stunning. How come? How come? Why is it? Is it because it's just so competitive down there? Is this a size issue? Those lighter guys are so competitive, they're so good, they're able to extend their careers. Is that the case, or is there something more to it? Because it's also true at the other end of the spectrum, and I couldn't really tell you why. But I remember the night that Stipe set the record when he defended the heavyweight championship twice. I believe Stipe went on and defended it three times. I think he broke his own record. I'd have to check that. But I do know that when he set the record for title defenses, it was at two. That's not very many. But it's a hell of a lot when no one before you had ever done it, right? I mean, it's one of those things. And you look at heavyweight, and you, you, you defer to the real obvious. Oh, well, they're big guys, and you know, one punch, and it can change it. Okay, I do too. But are we being lazy? Is there, is there a deeper thought? Should we be studying it and analyzing it different? And how come if it's okay to do and change hands and play musical chairs at heavyweight because of the power and the size, how come 135 has seven record-breaking, seven active World champions, I don't have a hypothesis for you, by the way. If you're waiting for me to hand you the answer, I don't know. I was impressed when I thought it was five. I had to come and amend the statement to six, and the underground corrected me that it's seven, and even as many as eight, depending on where you're going to put Garbrandt and the retirement status of favor. How come? 
How come those guys can stay active? How come those guys are still busy? You know, speaking of 135, Jose Aldo, I always say Aljo and Aldo, I get them confused. Let me clarify. Jose Aldo, though, came out and he spoke, which is very rare. Aldo does not speak very often. And I, one of the re I don't think he knows that we want to hear from him, by the way. That's not part of his game. I think he sees that a little bit as unsportsmanlike, but he also misses the piece of the pie that we want to hear from him. I put Aldo in the category of an inspiration. I believe he is inspiring people right now, and I don't know of a bigger compliment that I could give someone. I can pluck plenty of guys tough. These guys are studs. This guy's so fast. This guy's so strong. I can do plenty of those, and they're very nice things to say, but an inspiration? Somebody later in life who's already achieved everything and set records that are nowhere close to being broken is not done yet. And he's still pursuing the top prize. Like, I find that to be inspiring. I think that we need to hear from him. I think there's a very clear path to get Aldo back in there for a championship. I could see a way. You could stick him in right now, by the way, and nobody would argue, including Sterling. He would understand. And I could see a way. What, one fight, for sure. The right fight, the right marketing, the right statements ahead of time. Boom, he's right in there for the championship, no matter who's got the belt. No matter what happens between Sterling and Cejudo, just by example, if that's going to be what next. But Aldo spoke up, and he spoke specifically about Dominic Cruz. And he was very complimentary. And quite frankly, he should be. You've got two legends that are two world champions that are still active in the same division, and somehow, after all these years, have never crossed paths. It's a very interesting thing. And again, I don't have the answer for you. I don't even have a guess. I'm asking you. I'm asking you. If we've all deferred back at the other end of the spectrum of heavyweight, that the reason that Stipe, that the reason number two was a record, that the reason that belt changes hands so quickly, but it's because of the size and the power and the threat. If we defer to that, are we right? But secondly, how come the exact opposite end of the spectrum, you've got all of these world champions, more than any division, more than any division in history, still active, still contending and still meaningful? Tough question. We're probably going to have to go back and forth. You guys start. I'm posing the question. I want to see your answer.